now we have created a new user there and everything seems to be working perfectly fine and now let's move on and let's just create another api route in which we can get all of the users from the database so for that we need to move on again into the api and this is an optional step but we are going to create it to get all of the details of all of the users so we need to create it inside the api then we can move on we can create a new folder that can be the user then we can create a handler file for it so we can have the route dot ts which is the incoming request handler then we can move on then we can create a get request over there so we can have the export const we can have the get so that should be equals to an asynchronous arrow function so we won't be requiring the request over there now what do we need to do as the next step so we can just directly move on we can again have the try catch block and inside the try now what we can do so first we can have the await we can have the connect to database so first we would need to connect to database to get the details of the users and then we can move on then we can have the const we can have the users so that should be equals to the await then it can be the prisma dot we can have the user dot we can have the find many so the find many will return all of the records of the users and if you provide a condition over there if you provide any arguments then it will find all of the records matching that query and now let's move on so here we have all of the users and then we can move on we can just directly return the response so we can have the next response dot we can have the json and there what do we need to do so we can have the users so we only be needing to send the users to the request then we need to send the status as well and that should be the 200 which is okay and now let's move on let's have the catch as well and inside the catch now what do we need to do so we can have the error and that should be equals to so we can have the server error like that so we can have the server error like this for this and now the status should be the 500 and finally now what we can do so we can close the database connection as well so we can have the await we can have the prisma dot we can have the disconnect from the database and now let's move on let's create this request so we have the api then we can create another route we can copy the whole thing we can paste that over there so we have the api slash user so let's click on the send so let's see what happens so now we should be getting all of the users from the database so there you can see now we have one user inside the database which is the james and everything seems to be working perfectly fine so now let's create another user so that can be the mary so here we have the mary and email can be we can have the mary at the rate test.com so we can have same password for that so let's click on this end once again so that we should be having two users inside the database to verify with the next auth so now you can see if we move on to the get request so now we have two users inside the database and everything seems to be working perfectly fine and now let's move on so now we have the real users data and now let's move on so let's move on to the next auth and here now what do we need to do so now we need to check the details of the real users let's remove it from now let's remove that so now we have the users and now what do we need to do so here first you can see what we are doing so we have the authorize so we can make this function as an asynchronous function so we have the async authorize and first we have the validation checks then we need to move on we need to find the users details so first we can have the await we can have the connect to db once again we have the connect to database and after that now what do we need to do so i think again we can wrap everything inside the try catch block so with the try catch and we can move on we can have this so we can copy that and we can paste it inside the try catch block and inside the catch if we get an error then we can move on then we can return the null so then we'll be returning the null over there and before that we can log the message of the error as well so that we can see if any error occurred then we can have the finally and again inside the finally now what we can do over there and inside there again we can have the await we can have the prisma dot disconnect so that's how it's gonna work and now first we need to get the user's details so how can we do that so we can have the user and it should be equals to we can have the await now we can have the prisma dot we can have the user model then we can have the find first and the find first now what do we need to do so we can have the where query with that so we can have the where and inside the where now what we can do so we can have the where email is equals to we can have the credentials dot email so that's how it's gonna work so now we are fetching the details of the user which has this email over there and now we want to verify the password of the user and verifying the password would be again very simple but here we need to decrypt the password as well so as you know if we move on to the user register route you can see we are encrypting the password of the user with the bcrypt but now we want to check the actual password of the user because user only knows this password like the 123456 which they are sending 
so now we need to just decrypt the password and then we can verify the details of the user if that is correct or not so we can move on into the next auth once again we have the next auth file over there so here we can again import the bcrypt so first we can move over to the top we can import the bcrypt and that should be again equals to from the bcrypt and now what do we need to do so here we don't need this condition because now we only have the credentials provider but later on we'll be having the google provider the github provider the twitter provider so we need to check the details of those users as well so you can see like if we move on to the schema.prisma you can see some users won't be having the password because if the user logs in via the google or the github or the twitter so they won't be having the password they they will only log into the application so first we need to verify so what will be verifying so first we'll verify like if the user dot hash password so if the user contains a password then only we need to move on so we can have the if check over there like if the user don't have the hashed password then we can return the null over there so that the user can log in directly via their social media account so that's how it's gonna work and now the next step is now what do we want to do so we can just move on so after this if check now what we can do so then we can check so then we can just compare the password of the user with the actual password which we received we can have the const we can have the is password correct and that should be equals to the await and then again we can use the bcrypt and we have a function inside the bcrypt which is a compare which is used to compare the password so now we want to provide the data which we need to compare with the encrypted string so the data which we have is the credentials so we can have the credentials dot password and and we want to compare it with the encrypted string and the encrypted string that we have contains inside the user dot hash password so that's how it's gonna work so with this step now we'll be getting the boolean property if the password is correct or not like if the is password correct is true then we can just return the user property so we can have the return the user and else we are only returning the null as well so that's how it's gonna work so that's all for the credentials provided over there so first you can see again we can just re-verify the code so we have the async authorize we are checking the credentials of the user then again we have the try catch block first we are connecting to database we are finding the user with the exact email and then you can see you are finding the user with the exact email so you need to add the unique property as well inside the email so that you can do that so you can have the at the date that should be equal to the unique and after that again you need to sync your application with the database so you can move on so you can move on to the next auth then you can move on then again you can have the npx we can have the prisma then we can have the db then we can have the push to again sync our application with the database and that's how it's going to work so now we'll be having the unique identifier with that and if any user suppose creates a duplicate email then the user won't be allowed to do that and now let's move on so here we have the next auth over there and then we are checking if the user don't have the password then we'll be returning the null because the user needs to log in via the social media account which they have used then we have the password correct compare so then we are comparing the password of the user and if the password is correct then only we are returning the user and that's how it's going to work so now let's move on to the application so let's move on to the chrome once again into the profile then we can move on so we can have the localhost 3000 slash we can have the api slash auth then we can have the sign in so now we can provide the details of the mary or we can provide the details of the james so let's move on and let's provide the details so the user that we have which is a james at the rate we have the gmail.com so we have the james at the rate gmail.com we can verify that as well so we have this james at the rate gmail.com we can copy and then we can paste it over there and then we can move on we can provide the password which is one two three four five six so let's click on the sign in with credentials so let's click on the sign in so let's see what happens if we move on to the inspect and the network as well so we have the local host we have the details so let's see what happens now so here we have the fast 3g so we can move on we can have the no throttling and then we can move on so here you can see now we have the exact user which is james and we have the email as well which is a james at the gmail.com so everything seems to be working perfectly fine you can see now we are getting the details of the user and it is working fine so we can move on to the session as well so here you can see now we have the email and then we have the james so we have the same details that we have provided here so you can see now the next talk with the prisma and with the mongodb is integrated all together and they are working perfectly fine and if we just move on if we click on the logout so you can see now we haven't implemented the logout functionality yet so let's implement that so now we can move on into the main route which is a home page 
then we can move on swap to the json.stringify so let's move it inside the div so we can have the div we can have the json.stringify and after that we can have the button as well so we can have the button and on the own click of that button we can point the own click so we can have the own click and that should be a handler so we can have the logout so we have the logout handler with that and we'll be creating this function as well so we can have the const we can have the logout handler so that should be equals to a function and what do we want to do inside there so we can move on and we can import one thing from the next auth which is a sign out so we can have the await then we can have this sign out which is provided to you by the next auth and this can be an asynchronous function as well so we have the async over there and that's how it's going to work then we can have the logout as well so here we have the logout so let's see what happens so here we have the button of the logout let's click on the logout if we click on the logout now the user will be logged out so you can see now we are seeing the null property over there now the user is logged out but we can create another button as well so we can have the button for the login as well so we can have the login and we can provide a condition as well from this so we can provide a condition like you can see now we are getting the data as well we can get the status as well so what do we need to do so we can wrap this inside a gsx condition like if the status equal equals to we can be authenticated so we can have first the validation check over there so we can check if the status is authenticated then we want to show the logout button and if the status is unauthenticated then we can have the if the status equals equals to so we can have the unauthenticated then we want to show the details of this then we want to show the details of the login and that should be equals to we have the on click and instead of this on click so that should be the login handler so we can again create a function with that so that can be the login we have the login handler with that i think we can directly move on to a different route or we can define a router over there so we can have the cons we can have the router so that should be equals to the use router and it should be imported from the next slash navigation so i think it should be imported from the next slash navigation so we need to use the router over there then we can move on inside the login handler we can have the router dot we can have the push and that should be equals to slash api slash auth slash we can have the sign in so we can have the sign in with that and that's how it's going to work so if we move on so here you can see now we are seeing the login button if we click on the login you can see now we enter the sign in page and if we click on the sign in, so this time we can try with the mary and we can have one two three four five six if we just click on the sign in with credentials so let's see what happens once again so you can see now we are seeing the mary at the rate gmail.com you can see everything seems to be working perfectly fine so now we have successfully integrated the prisma with the mongodb with the next auth and it is working fine 